Today, we're gonna throw some agate ware. Agate ware is when, it's a process where you take multiple colors of clay. Like here's an example. You can see it's got kind of brown and white clay all mixed together, but not all the way mixed together. And you throw a normal piece of pottery with it. See, it's all swirly. And then the outside of the piece will not look swirly when you first throw it because it's got slips stuck to it from throwing. But oops, when you're done throwing and it's dry enough, you can trim off the exterior and it will look like swirly. The pottery will look swirly. Um, if you are interested in making agate ware, it's pretty important to pick um, pot, clay that shrinks at about the same rate. Otherwise, it'll shrink away from itself and you'll end up with holes. And that's bad. So we're going to center. I like to center with the wheel going super fast. It's easier. times here. You want to get the clay wet because otherwise your hands will stick to the clay as you throw and that's bad. You also don't, agate wear, I feel like you should sort of do as little wheel wedging, coning up and down as you can so that you maintain as much of the agating as you can. So now we're going to open up the clay. Put your finger on the clay and let the clay turn. It'll make a little spot in the center that is clearly the actual center important when you're opening any piece of pottery, when you're throwing a piece of pottery and you open the clay, that you open it on center. If you don't open it on center, the walls will be different thicknesses and that's bad. You get a wobbly pot. And I suppose if you want a wobbly pot, there's nothing wrong with that. But we're not going for a wobbly pot today. Okay, so I'm gonna, as I open here, as usual, we're gonna pay some special attention to the bottom of the pot so that we don't get ass cracked. It is actually sort of doubly important Pay attention to the bottom of the pot when throwing agate wear because you're more likely to get cracks on the bottom where the two colors, or three colors, in this case it's three colors, it's two colors of brown, kind of a red brown and a regular, a kind of a tan brown hopefully, and a white. So here we go. Get that way, that As you're throwing walls, it's important to pay attention to the rim of the pottery. Whatever you're making, the rim is going to get a lot of wear. And so it's important that it is compressed and really solid so that it doesn't crack or 
break after it's being used. So I tend to hold it between my, like these two fingers, you know, my index and thumb on my left hand and then push down with my index finger of my right hand kind of on the side so that it's compressing it. And then you wanna, I wanna, I want the edges to be, if you do that, you end up with a very flat part on top and I don't want an entirely flat rim. You want sort of a rounded rim if you're going to put your lip on it in particular. If I was making a teapot, it would be different. A pitcher. But. Okay, so you'll notice that as is typical when you start throwing a piece, if you don't do anything to it, the rim starts to flare this way, and I don't want that. I'm going to make a pot-bellied cup here, so I'm going to push the rim in, because that's sort of where we're headed, is a pot-bellied cup. Right now it's not very pot-bellied, it's just sort of got a waste on it. I always think of that as a waste. Again, we're going to sort of keep, continue to pay attention to the top so that it doesn't get too big. If it gets too big around, it'll fling out and you won't be able to fix it. You won't be able to push it in anymore. There's like point where there's too much, you know, there, it's too wide and it won't get narrow again. So here we are. Keep it nice and centered. Now, you've seen me before. The way I make a pot bellied piece. So I like this red rib, it's by Mud Tools. And I like to push it, you can, it's flexible. And because it's flexible, if you hold it like this against your pot, it actually, even though it's, I don't know how to explain it, because it's against a round piece, will allow you to push out against that edge, against the rib, I mean, and then you get this beautiful, like, perfectly round body. Um, definitely flat. And then I'm going to compress it again and round it off because when you cut it off it ends up being a very a very flat and then you know the edge tends to be very sort of sharp and I don't want sharp edges where you might put your lip that's bad all right so now we're gonna grab a little 
wooden, it's a little wooden tool that I like. And I'm gonna, it's got this end and it's got this end. And so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the sharp, the pointy end, and I'm gonna put it against the, the bottom and I'm gonna cut down because I want to get rid of that little edge. It's got a little bit of extra weight in the shoulder of the pot. That's called the shoulder. And so if I cut that off now, I don't have to trim it off later. to dry out the bottom. And because I want to be able to trim it right away, I'm going to take a heat tool and kind of dry off the outside. I'm not going to do it on camera, but I'm, I'm going to simulate what we All right. The exterior is now dry enough. It's no longer tacky. And I'm just going to trim it to about probably up to here where I'm going to glaze it. So it doesn't matter if the entire body is dry enough. When I trim agate wear, I like to use a big wide trimming to ribbon tool so that I end up with mostly very flat. If you use a tool like this one, which is what I usually use to cut cups and things, it tends to be to leave more ridges, and I don't want ridges. So here we go. We're going to see the different colored clay is starting to show drop a lump of dried clay there I'm gonna move that important to keep your trimming tool clean. If you leave little bits of clay on it, they'll make ridges and things while you're trimming. And I suppose one might choose that on purpose, but I'm not. <laughs> it isn't what I want. So there you go, we have all agate So then I'm going to trim it off the base. And when I trim it off the base, I want to hold the wire tool down and turn the wheel slow, slow, slow. So that I get a nice flat bottom. Now, we're just going to pull the wire tool out, because while I've dried the outside, the inside is not dry, and it would be all mushy and I'd misshape if I 
took it off the bat. So here we go. You can see there's the A getting. And then I'm going to cover it up, let it dry some more. And tomorrow I'm going to put a handle on it because it's going to be a big agateware mug. I'm also going to trim the bottom because it's got, you know, bottoms always need trimmed. Um, so there you go, throwing agateware.